What you're about to listen to is a Bri Fi production. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Bri Fi podcast. I'm your host, Bri Fi, your comics guy, and we're back for another late episode of the Bri Fi podcast because why why would I do anything different, right? Why would I put shows out on time for you guys? But no, I did mention in the last episode that this past week I was at fire school, so I was learning to be better at being a firefighter for my job, and that you're lucky if you got an episode at all. I Actually, I told you prepare to not have an episode, but here I am on a Saturday just kicking it with me and my microphone when I could be with my family. <laughs> Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoy the episode. Got a, quite a bit of nifty nerd news because one of the other things that has happened this past week was it was Pokemon Day. And on Pokemon Day, the Pokemon company likes to announce new things, new games, new product type stuff. But mostly we're going to focus on the game aspect of it because that's what I'm most excited for. So with that being said, let's get in to the nifty nerd news this week. All right, guys, up first in the Nifty Nerd News. Since we've already alluded to it, there was the Pokemon Presents this past week, and it talked about some new stuff that had coming up. One of the things that has some people kind of like wishy-washy, but I think, um, I don't know. I think for me, I'm more excited about this. So it's a new Pokemon mobile trading card game. And so we do have uh, like Pokemon TCG Live, which is essentially playing the actual Pokemon trading card game on your phone. But Pokemon now has launched a new version of that game. Well, maybe not even a new version of that game, but a new game featuring Pokemon cards. They've released a trailer for it. You can check it out on YouTube for Pokemon trading card game Pocket. Now, if you're familiar with games like, um, I guess Marvel Snap would be the closest that I can think of. It's a more simplified version of the trading card game to help bring in new players and hopefully get them transitioned over to like the actual trading card game live app or just, you know, playing actually in physical format. Now, what's great about this, so if you've ever, you've probably maybe have seen these released in stores, but they have like Pokemon My First Battle which is essentially what Pokemon trading card game Pocket is going to be. And it's a very simplified version that I think you usually only need like one energy card to use whatever move you need to for the Pokemon. And then like how it all works is a lot easier. So I think this is just taking the My First Battle um, system and moving it over to a mobile app. But like I said, in the vein of like Marvel Snap and those like online card games that you've already seen before that are a little quicker, fast-paced type mobile games. And I think that's a cool thing. What's make this what makes this a little more interesting too is one there's going to be spe- specific uh card artwork that you can only get through Pokémon Trading Card Game Pocket. So and but maybe they might do promo cards that they might transition to the physical form we don't know there there's a lot that's still up in the air with what they're going to do with this i think it's supposed to come out in 2025 or no actually it says the free to start app is coming to ios and android devices in 2024 so we're getting the game this year at some point doesn't really say but one of the cool things about it you're going to get two free booster packs a day so you're going to be able to open booster packs daily for someone like me who is addicted to opening booster packs and getting cool cards being able to get two free ones yes they're only digital but still like that kind of feeds that itch like scratches that itch that i have um so i'm pretty excited about that and so we'll see maybe it'll be something that will get new players in and keep older players happy another thing they've announced is that pokemon go and pokemon horizon the series um Oh, I'm sorry. I misspoke. 
Well, one, the Pokemon Horizon series is supposed to be coming to Netflix sometime in March. Actually, I think March 7th. So right around the corner as of this recording next week. So we've we've seen or I've seen clips of it from Japan and stuff. And I've been dying to get a chance to watch Pokemon Pokemon Horizons on for American audience. So that, that coming out in March is really exciting for me to commemorate the event. They are adding a Pokemon Go event with it with Pokemon Horizons also bringing in Pokemon from the new game Scarlet and Violet into Pokemon Go like more of them we've gotten some of them but not all of them looks like the big ones are going to be like um what are, what are they Ar- Armor Rogue and Celadurge and uh, Char Cadet like those things and they're supposed to be like a special Pikachu from the Pokemon Horizons anime that's going to be in Pokemon Go so there you go some exciting news there and then the last bit of pokemon news for you guys and there's a whole bunch more you can look up pokemon presents and see what else they announced but just picking out the big things is uh the last bit of news is a new pokemon game and it's another pokemon legends game which has me super excited because i was worried that legends arceus or arceus whatever you want to call it was kind of like a one and done type thing but it looks like now the pokemon legends is series is going to be its own series alongside the mainline game so it has me really excited and this one is po- pokemon legends z to a and i cannot be more excited this one's gonna be like where pokemon legends or Ar- arceus was a past like in the past type pokemon game it looks like pokemon z to a is going to be present and actually it's going to take place in lumio city which is pretty interesting for people who have watched some of the newer pokemon anime and as far as i can tell currently it's only taking place inside of lumi uh, lumio city <clears throat> excuse me and i guess each district of the city will represent different areas of the map versus like like what's crazy to me is uh, Arceus was so vast, like, but yeah, you had to fast travel back to your main base to go to different regions, but it's still each region was quite huge. So for them to make a city in hopefully the same capacity, or maybe there's going to be more to it, like an underground portion of Lumio City. I don't know what they're going to do with it. I'm pretty excited at the possibilities and the things that they have learned from the first Pokemon Legends game, and hopefully it translates to. So or it gets improved upon and just is a better game. Like, but don't get me wrong, the first Pokemon Legends game, to me, in my eyes, is far better than Scarlet and Violet gameplay wise. Now, Scarlet and Violet has gotten better with the Indigo disc, I think, or I've I've at least enjoyed it more because they've brought back the original starters and other starters from some of the first games that I've played. And, and and it has gotten better. Scarlet and Violet has gotten better. But the Legends game, the play style, and how you interact with Pokemon, I think, is far and wide a better version of Pokemon than the mainline games have been. So I'm really excited for another Pokemon Legends game. Hopefully there's a bunch of things that they've kept from the initial Legends game and moved it to this second one. And since we're still talking about Pokemon, we'll move into the Pikachu with Gray Felt Hat Saga. We've talked about this on multiple episodes. And the last time we talked was the Pokemon Company International was bombarding chain stores because the hobby shops that they were giving these cards to were upselling and turning an insane profit. So they started uh, this second wave. They pulled it out of hobby shops and put it into like chain stores that won't sell cards like that. And it seems to have worked, man, because Pikachu with gray felt hat or Van Gogh Pikachu, as others have called it, has actually finally dropped under $100 for the price of the card. I think currently it's sitting, actually I can check right now by just going online. Um, We'll go to TCG player, which is where I always like to go. Um... Pikachu with gray felt hat. Current price is sitting, market price is sitting about $88, $89 for this. And what, like I tell you guys, this thing has been insane. At one point over the past, uh, how long has it been out? For a year, 
at one point this thing exceeded $170 for the price of the card. And it's slowly been coming down. Like, Pokemon's been doing its best. Because this was a free giveaway for people to, like, visiting the Van Gogh Museum and stuff like that. And so it, it's taken a lot. And like I said, it's been a saga of back and forth between fighting against scalpers and trying to get uh, people. Because, I mean, this is probably one of the most popular cards that I've seen come out of um, the Pokemon company. And so it's just been very interesting to watch. And it looks like it's finally kind of settled out. Like, this is no longer going to be a thing. I mean, yeah, it's still an $80 card. But then I look at the Magic Card full art that I want from Paldea Evolve and that's still sitting close to $70 right now too so like there's still some value with Pokemon cards now now but now that I've like really gotten the cards and I've been looking at baseball and football and stuff like that those like baseball and football cards are insane some of these are worth thousands like we're talking like base set Pokemon money <laughs> and these are cards being printed out right now so that's crazy to me um what else do i have for nifty nerd man am i actually out of was that it was it just all pokemon news i feel like it was just all pokemon news this week because i mean we talked about borderlands i believe last um last week yeah we did talk about borderlands the new trailer that had dropped i'm excited for it cautious but excited um really <laughs> drop my phone while i'm trying to and now my camera's up but I think that's it, man. No, wait, I do have a bit more. Uh, oh, yeah, we got to talk about this. Holy crap. Sorry, I, I spaced out here. So in recent news, Wendy's has come under fire because they were trying to implement surge pricing. And whereas they could change the price of their food on an, a digital or electric menu, depending on what time it was. And that went over about as well as you would uh, expect if for a, a fast food place to be like, hey, we should take Uber's advice and, and institute surge pricing. Like, follow, like literally saying that they wanted to follow in Uber's footsteps, which no one likes when Uber does that. No one likes to have to pay more for an Uber like after an event or stuff like that when they know damn well like it, it is cheaper, but they choose when it's quote-unquote in higher demand well i mean it's not even quote-unquote like when it is in higher demand to forcibly charge people more a premium for that and now wendy's was flirting with the idea of that and like i said that did not go over very well in fact it went over very very poorly <laughs> so of course within the next two days wendy starts backtracking and like oh no no what we meant was like we can now do like discounts on like slower times a day yeah right you're not gonna offer your food for cheaper that's not how you greedy corporate bastards work so i already know what you're saying is sorry we didn't mean to say it in a way that would make you mad so now we're gonna try to say it in a way that makes you less mad but still do the thing that makes you mad like they're still going to be doing surge pricing on you and just like make you think oh no like uh it's this is the normal price now and that's really where we've gotten with inflation now is just corporate greed being like oh no this is a normal price and us as consumers have just don't have the will to fight back anymore i guess is really what it, they finally whittled us down to nothing <laughs> and that's it for the nifty nerd news actually no there's one last thing i don't i don't want to end on a downer like that but what i do want to end on is whale sex <laughs> because scientists um have finally photographed humpback whales having sex for the first time ever and now they know obviously these whales have sex and how it all came about is you know they, they're studying whales and their social habits and things like that and they were finally able to get a historic first pho photographic evidence of humpback whales having sex but what makes this even more interesting and even sillier is that it was two male humpback whales having gay sex <laughs> and that's the only time that we have ever had any kind of evidence of them other than like seeing more humpback whales being produced this is the first time we've ever seen them have sex and it was two males it was it was the most 
gay whale sex that you could ever <laughs> no i don't know um but it to me it's just kind of funny and like there's a whole article talking about it and like just wow just wow and they said uh, and i quote we realized pretty quickly that there was a scientific significance to it even if it, if there were no articles published or nothing ever came of it we knew that it was important to the scientific community and those who were studying the whales just because of the unique behavior. Now, to to be fair, this is, I, I guess, for whales? I don't know, man. I like, I honestly don't know how often wildlife have this, like, just these type of relations, for one. <laughs> but I thought it was really interesting, like, because, like, I guess you equate it to such a human thing sexuality and gender and all those but to see this something like this happen in the wild maybe it does like for those who don't or who believe it's a choice maybe might think a little differently if you know animals do it too like wildlife does it too i don't know if i'm saying this right or in the right way but like it's not like typically we think of animals who live and survive solely on instinct to do something that some people have claimed is just a choice you know maybe that maybe that logic doesn't totally fit what's actually happening in the real world i don't know um but it's to me it is of some scientific significance because it's something that hasn't ever been recorded before or notated before so that's pretty important to me, I think, going forward in just the study of different animals, mammals, and and there's how they interact socially. Like, not just sexually, but socially. So this could be an interesting thing. But that's all that I have now for the Nifty Nerd News. Left you on something to think about. <laughs> uh, up next, let's just... Uh, I don't know, we'll figure out something to talk about because I don't really have anything. All right, guys, and the last thing that we'll talk about before I free you to your weekend is, um, oh, Comic Palooza. How could I have forgotten about Comic Palooza? Of course, Comic Palooza is coming around this year. Um, May, there is a, I have dates. I have dates, even though I don't have confirmation of whether I'll be a part of it or not. May 24th through the 26th in Houston, Texas at the George R. Brown Convention Center. Have to tell you about this because regardless if I'm there as a podcast or not, I will be there in, in some capacity because this is hands down my favorite convention all year long. Not only because it's very close to me in Houston, Texas, but because it is one of the largest conventions in the United States, um, definitely the largest in Texas, is, takes up the entire George R. Brown Convention Center, all levels of the convention center, the main floors at the bottom, uh, the second floor with panel rooms and guests and other forms of entertainment, and even the top uh, floor uh, panel rooms and more things. And for me as a podcaster, it's great because there are multiple podcasting stages to... Um, perform from and be a part of last year i had the opportunity to do an episode from the main stage on the main floor right next to all the celebrity guests however i got food poisoning and almost died <laughs> so i was unable to uh perform or have a, a show that weekend so hopefully i'm going to rectify that this weekend i am not eating any chicken any chicken wings because i might have chicken chicken i love chicken but I definitely will not be eating suspiciously colored chicken wings. They were suspiciously pink. My wife warned me, and I, a few beers in, said, it's fine. The alcohol will kill the bad. It did not. <laughs> and I commenced to vomit profusely for the rest of the weekend. It was great. And diarrhea. And just be an absolute wreck the entire time. So hopefully this year it doesn't happen. I get to hang out with friends and actually have a good time. 
And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Like I said, May 24th through the 26th. But the big news is Comic Palooza announced its first round of guests, one of them being one of my absolute favorite comic book writer slash artist slash just person, Chip Zdarsky. And my first iteration of, or my first encounter with Chip Zdarsky was in a comic book called Sex Criminals. And I know listening to that title sounds bad i guess but the premise of the story is that there is two main characters a man and a woman who when they have sex they discover or when they climax i guess that's the better word to put it they discover that they have time stopping powers which to them in their own world thought was very unique until the one day they meet have sex with each other and then find out that they are both in in what they thought was their sacred place and now they share it together and then they dis, dis, um the story turns into a heist book slash corporate espionage type like it gets crazy and so in depth and there are more characters introduced to the story and it gets so much fun. It's such a funny book. It's such a sexy book. It's such an interesting commentary on sexuality, gender, and like society as a whole. It, it's such a good book. It's uh, drawn by Chip Zdarsky, but written by Matt Fraction. And I love every bit of that story. And then moving on from that, I think the next big thing that I remember Chip Zdarsky in was uh, Howard the Duck. There was a Howard the Duck comic with Chip Zdarsky that I thought was absolutely phenomenal. I immediately from there said, this guy needs to write Spider-Man. And lo and behold, he then began writing Spider-Man. He did the spectacular Spider-Man run, which I think is spectacular, for lack of a better word. And so if you haven't read any of his books, you should definitely check it out. If you can't get to a bookstore or a comic book store to check them out, Always go to Marvel Unlimited, download the app, read through all his books. Um, they are phenomenal. He does. He's done some stuff with DC. He's done other independent works. At Stillwater is one of them. I can't remember what the other books off the top of my head. But I'm so excited that they're bringing someone like Chip Zdarsky in, someone who I've been a huge fan of for a long time. So I'm super excited. I'm hoping to get some type of signature or drawing Hopefully on a Sex Criminals book. I don't know. We'll see what. But I'm going to bring stuff. I'm going to bring all kinds of stuff. And hopefully he will sign said stuff. And so and he's like delightfully Canadian, which is even greater. But yeah, so that's really what I wanted to talk about. We'll finish the episode with that. Comic Palooza. Um, I'm also going to be working with Colt 45 Podcast. They have something very fun and stored for their like... Uh, or one of their panels that they're going to be doing. And so uh, Casey and I will both be partaking in that. So we're very excited for that as well. And I don't want to spoil the surprise, but if you like comic books and you like there, no, no, I can't spoil it. I just can't. But if you like comic books, definitely want to check it out. And if you're a fan of image comic books and a really popular image comic book, then you might want to hang out. I don't know if I can say much more about it right now. I, I don't think they've said anything on their show about it, really. So I I'm, I might be overstepping my boundary <laughs> here. So I'll just leave it at that. But I'm super excited to be a part of what they're doing there at the Cult 45 Movie Podcast. And honestly, shout out to them. If you guys haven't, I mean, I know my show is not really that popular. So, you know, the five people listening to the show... If you're looking for something way better than what I do, head on over to the Cult 45 Movie Podcast. It'll put hair on your chest. But also, their take on movies is just classic, man. Um, they are genuinely not just friends of mine and friends of the show, but like they're genuinely a phenomenal podcast where it, I feel like they should... They they're they're good and they're big, but they should be way bigger because just their take on things and their humor and the way that they just riff off each other is so much fun, so entertaining. They're hands down in my list of podcasts. They're always the first podcast I listen to when new new episodes update or when I get around to listening to episodes. 
because they just they have it, man. They have whatever chemistry, whatever thing it is that we're all looking for as podcasters. They have it, and it shows so much in their episodes, and I love it so much. And plus, the movies that they talk about um, are so just on point, man. Like they they cover anything. They cover movie comedies, dramas, scary movies, uh, just anything you can think of. Uh, they pretty much cover it, man. And then if you sign up for their Patreon, you get a chance to force force them into a torturous watch. And I had my opportunity to um, pick a movie for them. And one of them that I was planning on picking was a God awful movie that I thought would be just hilarious to force them to watch and talk about and condemn me for it for the rest of my life. But then I thought, no, I like as funny as that would be to me personally, I don't want to do it to them. And instead I went with demolition man. So if you go to the episode for demolition man, excuse me, demolition, my throat demolition man on the Colt 45 movie podcast that's the movie that i had requested them to watch and i love their take on it uh, they brought in um uh, goddess man where is, i don't remember what podcast and what she all does and that's a shame i'm a horrible friend for not um watching her her stuff so i'm gonna have to go check that out to be a better friend um, but, uh, listening to them talk about it and their love for it or hate for it or their thoughts on it is hilarious to me. And I, I was so happy that they did that episode. Anyway, shout out to Cole 45, uh, beat them down and random Randy Savage. Thank you guys for always just including me like your little brother, uh, <laughs> who you just feel bad for. So you just keep inviting him to things cause maybe one day he'll make his own friends and, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway that's it for the podcast this week guys thank you so much for listening thank you so much for being a part of it and hopefully you have a great rest of your week and don't forget comic palooza may 24th through the 26th get your tickets now um there has already been a price increase because now they're announcing guests and i don't know why i, I like just you always get your tickets before because they're always going to announce great guests the fact that they've already announced chip zadarsky and that was in their first round of guests, I can only imagine what they have in store for the rest of the announcements. So I'm like super stoked. I mean, we've we've had great guests over the years. And so starting out with Chip Zdarsky, in my mind, is like, that's a huge stepping stone. Like that, like instead of starting at level one, we're starting at level seven. And like, all right, where are we going from here now? You know, like that to me is crazy. Anyway, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for um, just being here, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.